we are a team of three. What we are trying to create is a tangible user interface. Um, so what the main purpose is to take physical inputs as a uh, physical objects as inputs to the applications instead of taking a keyboard or a mouse click on it. So if you can see, we have a camera underneath the table. So whatever is placed on it, so if I have an object placed, so that identifier will be cached by the camera and then it does the processing on it. So as you can see, if you place two matching objects onto the surface, it identifies them as matching. And then if you place the ones that are not matching, it'll give you a feedback saying that they're not matching. And the second application is the spelling bee, where A and T is a word, so you can see it's highlighted in green. But you know T and A is not a word. We are targeting our project to young kids' children, so we are trying to create applications that would be useful to young kids. We have decided to create a mobile restaurant point of sale system. So our project is basically comprised into four modules. It's the iPad, iPhone, kitchen display, and server database. Each customer table will have an iPad installed on the table. Waiters will be carrying an iPhone with a, a mobile version of our application. It all communicates through a web server, uh, uh, sorry, a server database. Let's go ahead and place this order now. So we have to click place order. Now it asks us whether or not we want to confirm the order. We'll, we'll hit OK. As soon as we do that, if you look on the kitchen display up top, you can see that our inside the kitchen, our chocolate explosion got ordered right away. So it's been proven that heart signals are unique for each person. Uh, so uh, basically we implemented a system which uh, authenticates uh, users uh, in real time in less than six seconds. So I want to authenticate myself. Um, it tries to authenticate within six seconds. Now it accepted me. So now I want to claim to be someone else. For example, Sam. And now it rejected me. We've created a similarity matrix that sort of compares how similar one face is to every other face. The algorithm obviously doesn't know about all of these people, so it re-downloads and re-passes all of the faces. And now it's going to read the results to generate the clusters that you see over there. That's cluster one, that's cluster two, that's cluster three, and that's cluster four. Our project is a digitally configurable lab platform for teaching uh, analog electronics. So each auxiliary board we have here, we have about three right now, represents a different lab. And what we're going to demonstrate to you is our MOSFET board, which has three different parts. You can see if you zoom up right onto our board here, there's a resistor, and right beside it is a temperature sensor. When the heat is turned on, this red LED turns on. Once the heat reaches the threshold, you'll notice that the fan will turn on, and it will attempt to cool down the circuit. It usually takes a few seconds and it will cool down until the fan turns off. We looked into the uh, literacy rates of visually impaired people and we found that only 10% of visually impaired people are actually braille literate in North America. So in order to try and help get into this uh, market, we decided to create a um, cost-effective solution using Nitno Wire. Basically, Nitno Wire is a mem memory-shaped alloy that um, contracts and expands with heat. Now what I have here is A, B, C, and D. And so uh, this is what's going to be end up being displayed on the board. So now we go to the next character in the Braille alphabet. So now we push up this top right one. We've been able to get the cost of one Braille cell down to $2 compared to the current market solutions of $150 for one Braille cell. Essentially what we created was a system that allows the user to wear two head-mounted dis uh, head display with two screens, one on each eye and essentially using a Microsoft Connect to track the user's body. We basically took these, head, these goggles, which have an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a magnetometer in them. So essentially we can roll, we can tilt up and down, and we're supposed to be able to go from side to side, but in this room there's a limitation because the magnetic field is hindered by all the metal and the transformers that are next door. So we are inspired by a movie, Scanner Darkly, and also recent video games, and they give a cool cartoon effect. We have a one of three um, algorithms. So all, all three of them are running here on separate FPGAs. First one is called a bilateral, we call it the bilateral approximation algorithm, because it's an approximation of a bilateral filter. Uh, the second algorithm we call the cutout algorithm, because it was inspired by the look of the Photoshop cutout effect. And then the last one, so what it does is it runs the brightness channel of the image through a histogram and it rounds the brightness to certain levels.
All right, so our application is an automated mobile taxi dispatching application meant for the Android and iPhone. I log into the system, and at the same time, the company will have a taxi dispatching system where they can see all the taxis right now. So this, these are where the taxis are, and the red icons are where the pickup points are. So I'm just going to log in, and immediately, oh, there I am. I pop up in the automated dispatching system. So I simply just click Request Taxi, and then it will send a message to the to the driver. On the driver's side, we can also see everything. If the driver experiences an emergency, he can choose to cancel it. And the client can choose to pay by PayPal. He can choose to pay by cash. But everything's synchronized, so I know exactly without speaking to the client how much he has to give me. What we're trying to do is to get um, EMG signals from the arm and use that to control robot arm. What we first do is we built an amplifier circuit that filters out a lot of the noise and amplifies the signal that we need. And then that's passed into the DAC and then uh, into the MATLAB module, and then MATLAB module extracts the kinematic variables used to control the robot arm. Right, okay, so our project is the Rubik's Cube solar robot. Practically what it does, it takes the Rubik's Cube, which is randomly scrambled, and then it comes up with an algorithm which solves it. That includes two different boards and uh, different motors for the robot to actually manipulate the cube. It has it starts with the cube scramble, then it passes on to a Raspberry Pi board, which is running Linux to compute like the moves needed to solve the cube, and then it passes everything to the Arduino board, which is the microcontroller, connected with the motors to actually execute each move onto the cube. Just an overview about this project. We our goal was to develop a navigation aid for the visually impaired in indoor environments. Let's say we wanted to go to GB one one nine, for example. So now if there's an instruction to head east towards towards this area at nine, and then when it finds out that it's in this area, it says that you arrived at this area. The interface we created will take taps on the surface as input and will output a musical note corresponding to the tap location. We calibrate by telling the interface engine where we would like to tap.